Hello everyone and uh, welcome to my Life in the Universe pandemic series, a series of short talks about things to do with life in the universe that I think are interesting and I'm hoping you will as well. And uh, like I said before, uh, in the middle of a pandemic seems like a good time to think about life in its widest context. And the question I'm going to talk about today is this, how can we detect uh, life on distant exoplanets? And I'm sure that you've heard all this exciting news over the last two or three decades of the detection of planets orbiting distant stars, so-called exoplanets. Some of these planets are very large, the size of Jupiter or Saturn, and some of them are much smaller, the size of Earth, Earth mass planets, small rocky worlds uh, orbiting distant stars on which we might start to speculate about the possibilities of finding life. And the question is, how would we find life on such a distant planet? Some of these things are hundreds to thousands of light years away. So we're not going to send a spacecraft like we can to Mars to directly search for life, at least not anytime soon. So we have to detect this life remotely. How are we going to do that? Well, one way in which we can do it is to look at the light that travels through the atmosphere of that distant world. So if you pass light through a planetary atmosphere, depending upon the sorts of gases in that atmosphere, those gases will absorb some of that light. They will absorb particular wavelengths depending upon the gas, a fingerprint, if you like, of the particular gas. And if you look at the spectrum of that light, those dips in the light caused by the absorbances of different types of gases are a fingerprint of the composition, the gaseous composition of that atmosphere. And we call this method of uh, looking at the composition of these distant atmospheres, spectroscopy. So spectroscopy is a way of trying to find the composition of the atmospheres of these distant worlds. And it turns out that biology tends to produce gases. And I'm sure that you're uh, familiar with this, that when you breathe in oxygen to burn your food, you give out carbon dioxide as a waste product. And all sorts of biology produces gases of different kinds. And uh, those gases are a signature of the presence of life. We might wonder why life produces gases at all. Could we not imagine some alien life form eating solid food and only producing solid waste? Well, many chemical reactions in the universe, not just to do with life, but general chemical reactions, involve gases or produce gases as products. And if you've got a very complex machine, like a, a living thing, doing all sorts of metabolism and all sorts of reactions, there's a very good chance that in there, there's going to be a chemical reaction producing a gas of some sort that's going to be released out into the atmosphere around your life form. So the production of gas by living things is not some strange um, result of biology and of life. It's just simply a reflection of the fact that out there in the universe, many chemical reactions involve gases or produce gases. So a life form with all of its complexity has a good chance of producing some gases, as is the case uh, of uh, life on Earth. So we might expect or predict that if there's life on another planet orbiting a distant star, it too uh, might produce gases that then collect in that planetary atmosphere that we could detect through this process of spectroscopy. So then the next question we have is, what sort of gases could we look for? And we could think about some of the gases produced by biology and whether they would be suitable. For example, consider the gas methane. Uh, methane is produced by many larger animals. It's also produced by microbes. If you take hydrogen gas and you mix it with carbon dioxide, you can react those two gases together to release energy. So hydrogen and carbon dioxide produce methane. And this is the process called methanogenesis, genesis of methane. And microbes do this, archaea and other microbes living um, deep in the earth can react these two gases together to release energy, to power growth and reproduction. So biology produces methane. So that sounds like a good contender. We could look in the atmosphere of a distant exoplanet, detect methane, and we would find a signature of life. But the problem with that is that we can also produce methane by non-biological processes. And this is one of the first and major challenges that faces astronomers trying to look for life in distant planets. Is it really being produced by biology, the gas that they're looking at, or could it be produced by geological processes? In the case of methane, uh, there are certain reactions deep in the crust of the earth where water can react with rocks to produce hydrogen, serpentinization reactions as they're called. 
and this hydrogen can go on to react in all sorts of interesting ways in fischer tropsch uh, reactions to produce methane and other carbon containing compounds and that methane could be released into a planetary atmosphere and it has nothing to do with biology at all now here on the earth we can look at these um, reactions going on in the crust and we can look at the biosphere and we can sort of work out how much methane is being produced by geological processes and how much is being produced by biology and we can say something about how much of the methane in our atmosphere is a consequence of biology but that's only because we understand our planet quite well and we understand its geology and biology now imagine looking at life on a distant exoplanet where you know very little about the geology, you know very little about the history of that planet, let alone whether it has life or what sort of life. So it's very difficult to know if you were to see a methane signature in an exoplanet atmosphere, whether it's actually caused by biology or geology and what the proportions of those two things might be. So methane is a very good example of a gas that is produced by biology, but because it's also produced by non-biology, it could be quite an ambiguous biosignature of life. So we could then go on and think, what other gases are they? Are there? And there is an intriguing gas called uh, nitrous oxide, N2O, better known perhaps to you as laughing gas. And nitrous oxide is also produced by biology, by, by, by microbes in denitrification reactions. So microbes are very good at cycling nitrogen through the crust of our planet. They take up nitrogen gas from the atmosphere, they fix it in a process called nitrogen fixation into forms of nitrogen available to you and I and the rest of the biosphere. And eventually that nitrogen needs to cycle back into the atmosphere again as nitrogen gas. And it can do that uh, through a diversity of pathways, one of which includes the production of nitrous oxide. So N2O, nitrous oxide, is also quite a good biosignature, signature of life on a planet. The problem with N2O is its concentrations are very low. Uh, on the present day Earth, it's about 300 parts per billion. And even some of that is produced by human activity. Now, low concentrations of a gas are not necessarily a problem because it has a very strong signature, a very strong absorbance. We might still be able to see it on a distant exoplanet. Some people have speculated that certain sulfur containing gases produced by life at very low concentrations may have strong enough spectra strong enough absorbances to be seen in that process of spectroscopy so even low concentrations of gas might be detectable by astronomers but having said that uh, low concentrations of gas do add to the problem of detectability because if the concentrations are so low biology may not be producing enough to be able to give us a signature of its presence so that's another problem we have not just is it produced by geology? Could we confound a detection with something being produced by geology? Uh, the second problem is, is it being produced at good enough concentrations to be detectable by us, the alien astronomers, trying to find this other alien life? So then we might go on and think, well, are there other gases associated with biology? And there is one gas that's very familiar to you and I, and that is, of course, oxygen at 21% in our atmosphere. Very high concentrations relative the other gases that I've been talking about, and it produces a very strong signature in spectroscopy. You can detect oxygen directly, and you can also detect ozone, the product of oxygen uh, reacting, chemically reacting high in the atmosphere with ultraviolet light to produce ozone, O3, a sort of derivative of oxygen. And that produces a very strong signature, 9.6 microns, and you can detect that gas in the planetary atmosphere. If there is an alien out there with a telescope looking at the Earth, they will see oxygen in our atmosphere and they will see ozone. And it will be a very strong signature of the presence of that gas in our atmosphere. And what's so exciting about oxygen is it is produced by photosynthesis, by biology, by uh, cyanobacteria on present day Earth, algae and plants and other um, uh, photosynthetic uh, organisms producing oxygen that collects in our atmosphere and gives us this very strong biosignature. And if an alien astronomer was observing this planet, they would find uh, that 20% uh, or so of oxygen in our planet an extremely suspicious sign that there is likely to be biology in our planet. So oxygen is thought to be one of the strongest biosignature gases that we could look for on another planet. It's very difficult to get high concentrations of oxygen at the levels that we see on the Earth uh, on, uh, in a planetary atmosphere without biology. There are ways that we, in which you can do this. Uh, for example, 
if you have an atmosphere that is, uh, has high concentrations of water and that planet is orbiting a star that's very active, producing lots of radiation, that radiation can break apart the water into its constituent hydrogen and oxygen. Remember, water is H2O, hydrogen and oxygen. If we break up that molecule, we end up with hydrogen and oxygen. The hydrogen is a very light gas, so it tends to escape, escape the gravitational field of the planet and disappear off into space. The oxygen is left behind. So in particular circumstances, we can get a buildup of oxygen gas in a planetary atmosphere. The good news is we know what those specific situations are, so we can rule them out. If we saw a planet with high concentrations of oxygen and it happened to have a lot of water in its atmosphere, it was by a very active star, then we can ask ourselves the question, are we just seeing something produced by geology rather than biology? So even though there are these possible false positive detections of oxygen, we know how we can rule them out. But it is another problem we have to think about, false positive detections of life. A false positive is where you positively think you found life, but in fact you haven't. A false positive detection of life. So we can rule those things out and, and then try and find the planets where high concentrations of oxygen might suspiciously indicate the possibility of life on these distant planets. As well as false positives, we should also be aware there could be false negatives. Imagine a planet where there's so little life on that planet that it's not really producing much gas at all. Not enough for our astronomers to see gases in the atmosphere and to be able to detect life. So that sort of planet, we would think there was no life because we could not detect life. And yet on that planet, there might be a very low biomass, a very low quantity of life. That would be a false negative detection of life, a negative detection of life that turns out to be false because there is in fact biology on that planet. So we have to be careful of false negatives as well. So that's where we are. A lot of people are looking at different gases, trying to find new types of biosignature gases that could be indicative of life. Oxygen remains one of the strongest candidates as a biosignature gas for looking for the uh, presence of life on distant planets and one of the ways in which we might uh, look for alien life. Before we leave this topic, it's worth mentioning that people have also thought about detecting life directly on the surface of a planet. So as well as the gases produced by life, life also contains pigments uh, that can absorb radiation and give it particular colours. If you go out uh, onto the street and look at the nearest piece of vegetation, you'll see it's green. And the reason why it's green is because plants are absorbing blue and red light in photosynthesis to drive their energy producing pathways and what's left over is green light and that's why plants look green because all the other wavelengths of light have been absorbed so the waste light if you like that's given off by plants is green and plants look green and these different spectral signatures of life the way in which life interacts with light and absorbs and reflects certain types of light are another signature of life and one of the most interesting characteristics of that vegetation that I was talking about is a thing called the red edge. Uh, plants tend to absorb red light, but the infrared light they tend to get rid of and get rid of very efficiently. And no one really knows quite why this is the case. Some people think that because infrared light is uh, equivalent to basically thermal energy, heat, en heat energy in plants, um, they're trying to reject the infrared to stop themselves from overheating when they're exposed to solar light. So they absorb the red light because they like that in photosynthesis. They get rid of the infrared light because they don't want to overheat. And as a result, we have this very strong spectral signature, a vegetation red edge, as it's called, uh, caused by this different absorbance. As you go from the red that's absorbed into the infrared that's rejected, you suddenly get this very different change in light. And this is called the vegetation red edge and it's a very characteristic signature of vegetation and other photosynthetic microbes on the surface of the earth and some scientists have proposed that we could look for this vegetation red edge uh, in vegetation and organisms on different planets of course life on different planets might be orbiting a different star with a different type of starlight that might affect the sorts of wavelengths of light that they use in their different biological processes we have to be very careful that our assumptions about uh, life on Earth, uh, we don't just make incorrect assumptions about alien life that might be based on a different biochemistry or doing different types of energetic reactions and, of course, containing different sorts of pigments that might give them very different signatures. 
But these are the general ideas. By looking at the way in which light is manipulated and changed by life, we could get indications that there's something going on on a distant alien uh, world, on the surface of that world, that is not just geology, that there's something down there that's changing light in a way that we would not expect rocks to do. So this is another way of looking for a biosignature of life, looking for the light reflected from the surface of that planet, from vegetation or whatever else it is growing on the surface of that alien world. So all of this um, area of, of looking for life on exo exoplanets is really thrilling and fascinating. Uh, many scientists working on it, trying to figure out new types of biosignature gases, new types of pigments. And with all this knowledge, we will be in a, in a better position to look at light coming from distant Earth-like planets, distant exoplanets, and answer the question, can we see life on those distant worlds? Thanks a lot uh, for joining me again. Take care. Bye.